You are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. To all you serious growthers out there in serious growth land, welcome to the podcast. Uh, you know, I want to mention something, um, and this is a life lesson, I believe. If you're trying to accomplish anything that is remarkable or extraordinary to some degree, and maybe a large degree, you will be defined by that. And the reason for that is because of the fact that it's extraordinary or hard to do, hard to accomplish. Not everybody will be able to do that. In fact, most won't. You'll be in the minority. And in order for you to accomplish that goal, you have to be defined by it. You have, and what I mean by that, and I'll relate this to serious growth, it's this. First of all, serious growth in the early 90s was the beginning of something. Okay, It, be, it was the beginning of us writing training courses. We started with the Bulgarian burst, and then we went right into, which was an evolution, we went right into serious growth training system. Bulgarian burst was a part of that. But it became uh, more defined. This is what I mean about really defining something. Serious growth, if you think about serious growth, it's very specific as it relates to training or bodybuilding. That's the beginning of it. And so we take it a step further. Serious growth was originally a training course that was written, but what happened, it exploded and it became a movement. It became a movement that was worldwide, which blows my mind. I mean, I was, when I was uh, in the early days, I was doing a lot of the answering questions. And I mean, when you're talking to people from across the world, it, it's mind blowing. And so it became a movement. And when something becomes a movement, what you have out there are people that are, or it's like a cult following. And so if I was to define, because the question then is, are you a serious grocer? How do you know if you're a serious grocer? And over the years, and you know, um, firsthand experience is invaluable. And you have to go through it yourself. And that's what makes it so important. Because for those of you who have, who have gone through serious growth training, and if you followed it to the nth degree, then you know what I'm talking about. That firsthand experience, you cannot, you cannot possibly explain with any kind of um, where you really get your point across. You, you can't explain serious growth. So I came up with what's called the serious growth creed. And again, the creed is to help define this even more, what serious growth really is. So there are five or six variables. One is being a student of the game. And you got to really think about what I'm saying uh, when I say student of the game. It's, it's very deep because a student of the game means that you have to be willing to make a commitment a non-wavering commitment to having the will to, to be hungry, to understand everything as it relates to, in this case, serious growth, putting on as much muscle as humanly possible. Don't just, you know, when I say a student of the game, really think about what that means because it's going to require a lot of discipline and a lot of time it's all consuming it's not for everybody and that's the reason why even a lot of the people i'm going to say a lot of people but i would say a percentage of the people who bought our courses i would like to think that all of them took it and they followed through with it but i know better i know that some of the people started the program and that serious growth ended up on a shelf and that's okay because those people were still a part of the movement, but they weren't a part of the full movement. What I'm talking about is you making the commitment to be all in student of the game. You're going to learn everything that you possibly can. You're not going to miss anything and it's going to be ongoing. 
the next component or variable is discipline to the nth degree. You can start seeing how some of these are really kind of connected to each other. Discipline to the nth degree. Do you know what that means? I mean, there are a lot of people that will nod their head yes, but they're just nodding to the idea that they they like the idea of of uh, discipline to the nth degree that they have that more than actually again it goes back to it's going to take us it's so much time out of your life day in and day out do you get what i'm saying to you do you really okay it's not it's not when when it's convenient for you it's every day you know most of the time when i was working out i got my ass kicked i got my ass handed to me now think about that. When you're getting your ass handed to you, every once in a while you 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 seem like you had one of those days where man, you could lift the the barn. You could just do more weight and more of everything. That's not how it is. That's not reality. I'll tell you that right now. And then you have that that you know honeymoon phase, which plays into that. So most people have fire in their in their rear end when they first start, normal. But that's not where you know where you find out who you really are in this serious growth creed is once you've gotten past the honeymoon phase, are you still willing to be disciplined to the nth degree? Think about that to the nth degree, very minute, nothing. I mean, even to the point where I remember, and this is part of the nth degree thinking when I was on my bike, I would not get off that bike. If I was doing 30 minutes, I would never get off that bike until I got 30 minutes in. I would never get off that bike at 29 and a half minutes because that would drive me fucking crazy. It's insane to some degree, but you have to be slightly insane to be a serious grocer. You think your most people will understand that? Uh, I don't think so. Certainly not your significant other, unless they were in the sport and they understand it to some level. Most people will not get you. What's wrong with you? It's not normal. That's the kind of stuff you're going to hear. Okay. Next component of the serious growth creed. Warrior mindset. Again, you see how these are all connected in some way to each other. In order for you to go into the gym, think about this. In order for you to go into the gym, and as Tom Platts used to say, bodybuilders walk in fire. The true ones walk in fire every time they go and they step foot into the gym. Can you really wrap your head around that? Uh, you're putting yourself through pain the minute, ideally, the minute that you walk into the gym to the time that you walk out. And if you're training, which you should be, 30 to 45 minutes, because that's what we recommend, so you don't overtrain. Can you imagine doing that day in and day out? Can you imagine doing that when you're, when you have a headache, you're not feeling well, you're sick. I trained a lot of times when I was sick. It doesn't matter. That's not the state of goal is unwavering. Oh, did you really forget what the state of goal was? Let me remind you. It's to put on as much muscle as humanly possible. You can't walk away from that shit if you're not feeling well or if you're sick. It doesn't work that way. Are you still a serious grocer? Never miss a workout. That's another one of the components. Never miss a workout. You know, do you think that's easy? I, I trained when I was hurt. It didn't matter. You figure out a way to train. Is it healthy? No. Not supposed to be. It's not that sport. That sport, bodybuilding for sport to compete is not healthy. If you can't understand that and not willing to take that chance, a risk, because it is a risk. You're going to get, it's not if, but it's when you're going to get hurt. If you can't take that risk and deal with that, I mean, I, one of the times that I was getting ready for a show, you, you're putting all this time in to getting ready for a show. And then 10 days out before one of my biggest shows, I pulled a hamstring. I mean, not slightly. The hamstring turned purple. That's how bad I, I pulled the ham. It popped. 
So what was I going to do? I'm not saying it's the it's normal and it's the right thing to do. But you when you have this mindset, the warrior mindset, it's dangerous because you override what your body is telling you. Your body is telling you you need to not train. You need to give yourself some rest. That might be the smart um, answer and what you should do, but not to a serious growth, or especially when you're 10 days out. You're going to compete come hell or high water in the fucking story. If you don't have that mindset, don't do this. I'm going to say it again. Do not do this because it will be really dangerous for you. And you're going to be really unhappy. Oh, guess what? That's part of the game. That's part of bodybuilding. Here's another component of, of uh, the serious growth creed. Repetition is the mother of skill. Think about that. And this is where so many people are missing the boat. I'm going to talk about um, as it relates to um, as it relates to repetition being the mother of skill. We're going to talk about warming up. Let's take a quick pause to tell you about something you are definitely going to want. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're going to get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief in the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Repetition is the mother skill that relates to your directly to your physiology, mind and body, because your physiology is all that. Your body by design is designed to adapt to whatever you're teaching it. Repetition does that. Think about this for a second. When you're first learning something, Unless you're a freak of nature or it's something that's just really easy. Unless you're, when you start learning something new, you don't get it right off the bat. And how do you get more proficient at that? Well, you practice. Repetition, the mother of skill. That's it in a nutshell. So you are teaching your body how to do something, whatever it is. In this case, we're talking bodybuilding. But it applies, you can see, to anything that you're doing. Maybe you're learning how to do a yo-yo much better you're not going to do rock the cradle the first time out and if you do fuck you i'm jealous kidding but you, you see my point okay repetition is the mother skill you're teaching your body what you want it to do whatever that is in this case putting on as much muscle as humanly possible the last component of a serious growth creed is question everything question everything now why is that difficult because think about this when things are going really well because you, you want to, okay, the goal is putting on as much muscle as humanly, humanly possible. You have to question everything, even when it's going right. Because you want to understand, because you're trying to understand things to the nth degree, you want to understand how you're getting a result. Sometimes that means going completely away from the results that you're making at that particular time. Why? Because you're not going to settle for, you're not going to get comfortable with your training, because the minute you do, you're dead in the water. Think about that. You have to keep overriding. You have to eat, ask, ask the questions. How can I do this in a better way? And yet you might be at a point in your, in your, you know, the years that you've already put in that, you know, results are coming at a pretty good rate, but that's not good enough. You question everything. If you're constantly going against what's normal. First of all, realize that putting on muscle on the body is not normal. It's abnormal. It's not what your body wants to do naturally. It does it out of 
um, in this case, when you're trying to put on muscle because you're pushing the body so far, it does it. it basically, you're kicking in the fight or flight nervous system. It does it to protect you. That's the reason why if you don't work out, your body atrophies. Because it realizes, hey, I don't need uh, this muscle. When you put a cast on your, on your body, it, your body shrinks up. Your body just it, it wants to work off minimal energy output. You're doing the exact opposite when you're training for, for bodybuilding. So you can see that that serious growth creep, going back to when I began this, I said, when you try to accomplish something really difficult, and I tell you what, from firsthand experience, putting on muscle is very difficult. And that's an understatement. It starts defining you. So those five or six components that we talked about are the definition of a serious growther. I want to finish up with this, and it pertains to the, um, the serious growth creed. And it goes against popular thinking. I have no problem with that, especially when it's, what I'm about to tell you is based on science. In other words, how your body works. Can't deny that. And I will tell you this, warming up is a waste of energy. I learned this when I was over in Bulgaria. Those people, I've said it once and I'll say it again, probably on another podcast, if not even more than that, they were way ahead of their time because you see, they had the, they had serious growth creed to a degree because they never settled for what the results that they were getting. They kept pushing for more and more. And what they learned, and this is out of the box thinking, and that's very difficult for people to do because it, it, you have to accept change. But what they learned, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, they were right. I was that guy that went over there thinking, you guys are full of shit. You got to warm up. That's just the way it is. And to, um, to question everything, which I did, I had to be open-minded enough to take something that they were telling me, like I'm telling you, because it's kind of intuitive. When I tell you, you don't have to warm up. You're thinking this guy's full of shit. You got to warm up. Why? Because we've always been told to do that in athletics. Think about like, if you were an athlete playing, even like a young kid, you probably were out there stretching before you did something. We just grew up that way. That doesn't mean that it's right. Good. That not necessarily. And when the Bulgarians told me that I was in shock. What do you mean? But I thought, you know, fuck it. I'll never really know unless I personally go do this myself because I was that guy that was warming up, warming up, doing warm up sets before I did the working set. And they warned me. They said, look, if you're that guy, which I was, they said, make sure that because your body is so specific in the way it adapt, adapts, repetition is the mother of skill. So that's really specific what that means. They said, if you're that guy that's warming up three or four, you know, two or three warm up sets, and then you do, then you start your actual training. Don't switch. Don't go from one extreme to the other because your body doesn't like that. It adapted to you warming up. That's very specific. Your body is now your body is lazy, but it's also very smart that way. It's adapting to its environment because of repetition being the mother of skill to that stimulus. They said, take about three weeks because why? Why three weeks? Well, 21 days of any regimen, your body starts adapting to that particular stimulus. So if you're going from warming up to, um, you know, your working set, you got to, instead of warming up for three sets, for example, warm up two sets and then go into your working set. So you're making that transition over a three week period. That gives your body a chance to adapt because that's what it does. That's its fight or flight mechanism that we talked about. So I did that. And you know what? Those guys are right. I, at first, I thought there's no way I can go in and load up 315 pounds on the bench press for set number one, because that took me usually about two or three sets to get to that 315. Lo and behold, they were 100% right. I was able to go in. I was... I became someone who was ready the minute I walked into the gym to, to start work, not to start warming up, to do work. 
so think about that. See how much more efficient you become? Look at all that energy that you wasted. That's why I said it's a waste of time. Look at that energy that you wasted in those three, in those three sets. If you're talking about being efficient and to put on as much muscle as humanly, humanly possible, you don't have the time to be wasting time. And that's what warming up does. Okay, so the, I, the boo birds come out and they say, well, what about when you get hurt? It's called active recovery. Active recovery is much different than you doing a bunch of warm up sets. There is a distinction. You're still training the muscle. You're not resting it. The only time you need to rest the muscle is if it's pulled off the bone. If you have a pulled muscle like I did 10 days out from a competition, I kept training. I modified it, but it was still training. It wasn't a warm up. There's a difference there. For those of you who have been in the game long enough, you understand what I'm talking about. For those of you that, that are, haven't been, the only way that you're going to really learn that is when you go into the gym and you are hurt in this case, because that's pretty extreme when you get hurt. Most people say, well, you should warm up the muscle. No, active recovery, when it gets adapts to that, your body's going to be ready to work much sooner than if you're doing a, a two or three or four warm-up uh, exercises. Warming up is a waste of energy. End of risk. End of story, end of report. That might be hard for you to swallow, but that's your problem. You'll have to trust me. You'll have to go into the gym and you'll have to do it yourself. But I caution you, this information that I'm giving you is not for beginners. It's not even for intermediate people. Bodybuilders keep themselves in the game because they figured out how to keep, their, how to keep training their body. That's with any athlete. That's what keeps... Uh, athletes, the good ones on the field, the mark of a good program or an athlete is that they stay relevant even when they play hurt. Because you know what? In athletics, I would say that you probably play hurt to some degree most of the time. Uh, that's all the information that I've got for you today. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Until then, I'll see you next time on Serious Growth Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at SeriousGrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.